about Iceland standing vis-à-vis -vis this, uh, this directive of the deposit guarantee schemes? Yeah, well, we are talking of a 94 directive. Mm. Uh, actually, I was a reporter on another directive, which was uh, the um, supervision of financial group. So I'm more uh, aware of the problems uh, of who is in charge of supervisions, because we have two problems. In the 94 directive, uh, the guarantee fund is clearly a private fund. Mm. That is, uh, some private banks do what they want. Mm. If they fail, there is a private organization, which is a fund, so that their depositor has paid for their losses, a part of their losses. Yeah. And now, in the directive I was in charge of, um, which was a directive uh, six years later, uh, there was a discussion about who was in charge of a supervision mm. to see whether uh, the guarantee was okay, uh, whether the bank was not taking too much risks, etc. Uh, and what is the position of a British and Dutch government is that that private debt of I saving is to be turned into a sovereign debt, mm. not because it is written in the 94 directive, because nothing of that kind is written in there, uh -huh. but because somehow uh, the state, the, the state of Iceland, is responsible, accountable for mistakes which are done in its territory. Yes. Well, this is totally contrary to the spirit of all the directives, 94, 2002, and all the directives onwards. First and foremost, the decision to transform a private debt into a sovereign debt could accrue only to a sovereign decision of the people. And that is true. That has been true from the revolution of the 18th century. Mm. A state cannot say uh, to a citizen, uh, your money, I take it because I want to lend it to somebody else. Yes. So there should be a law to do that. And there is no obligation of that kind, neither in the 94 uh, directive nor in the 2008. So basically you say that oh, the responsibilities of a state. It is very clear in the 94 directive. The state is here to say to a bank, you have to be in a proper guarantee fund. And what happens if a bank has its headquarters outside EU? And the 94 directive is very clear, and my directive is also very clear. It is the responsibility of a home state to say, well, in your uh, headquarter state, there is not a sufficient guarantee, so you have to, um, to, 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 uh, to participate uh, into the fund of a local state, of a home state. Uh, sorry, of a host state. Host state, yes, yes. The host state. Yeah. So the government of a host state, that is the British and Dutch governments, mm. should have tell to the branches of uh, ISAVE that your guarantee in, in Iceland is too weak, you have to belong to the British mm. or the Dutch uh, guarantee funds. So it is clearly the British and the Dutch mm. governments who have to pay for the Dutch and the British depositors in the British branches and subsidiaries of uh, ISAVE. And this is very clear in the 94 uh, directive. If they don't agree with that, there is a system in Europe which is the European Court of Justice that will settle that problem. It is not their decision to say, we will use the anti-terrorist law to capture uh, the belongings of Iceland citizens uh, in Great Britain or in Great Britain. Unless 
they are pretending that Iceland is a terrorist state that is financing Al Qaeda, but they have to prove it. Uh, but t tell me, so you think that in reality the responsibility lies more with the Dutch and the and the British than the Icelanders, the the government. Of course, the only guarantee that may exist, the only sovereign guarantee that may stem from a 94 uh, directive is in the host the host, not the home, but the host uh, state. And that was, that became the general rule in the new generation of uh, directives that is after 2000, mm. such as my directive, uh, directive about, about supervision of a uh, uh, financial conglomerate. This new directive, this new generation of directives says, in the global situation, uh, what do we do about banks whose uh, ho home state, that is the place of a headquarters, is outside EU, uh -huh. while a majority of their uh, deposits and their activity is in some country of EU? And the new directive says the supervisions belong to the place, the country, where the major activity occurs. Okay, but, but that is in that case to Great Britain. In my opinion, uh, the strategy of the Dutch and uh, British government was to avoid law. That is, they knew their position was extremely weak from uh, the legal point of view of the EU, of the European Union, and they would lose in front of a European Court of Justice. So they just behaved like in uh, Westerns or in uh, Amazonian Brazil, Brazilian Amazonian. Uh, that is, they use their strength mm. in order to convert uh, Ireland into, uh, Iceland, sorry, Iceland, uh, into uh, what is called in Spanish Peonage, peones. A peon uh, in Latin America is a peasant who is so poor that is turned into a quasi-slave of somebody that can lend him money, but he has always to pay back for his money. Oh. And uh, for instance, what Britain imposed or trying, or trying to impose to Iceland is, I lend you that money but you will have to pay me on generations and generations. Yeah. For instance, the, the very amount of interest between 2017 and 2024 will be equivalent, already equivalent to half the debt which is accruing to uh, ISAVE. Yeah. 